So our next speaker uh, is uh, playing her way uh, to a better world. And uh, she will tell us about uh, what it is to run a company called Retoy. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Soledad Pinero Misa. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Startup Day. Thank you. Is it on? Now it is. Hi, everybody. My name is... Thank you. No it's, no, it's not thank you. That was a good start. My name is Thank You. Uh, my name is Soledad Pinero Misa, and I'm the founder of, of Retoy. Uh, I thought Retoy creates places where children can play, and with the toy as a tool, and by playing, learn more about their rights, the UN Convention of the Rights of the Children, but also learn more about sustainability and global interdependence by following a toy's life. I will tell you more about that, but I will start by telling you how, how come we created Retoy, me and a loved friend of mine called Sadia Hussein. Retoy has been much of a, like, it's very similar to, to a love story. Uh, another love story of my life, and one of the reasons also that I created Retoy, is the love that I feel for my son. When I gave birth to my son, and the first time I looked at him in his, high, in his eyes, my, and sometimes, you know, when you're kind of nervous, my English is not very good looking, like some people say. Uh, and I guess it's, well, it's a, actually a Cuban singer. They, she always says that my English is not very good looking. But anyway, the first time that I looked into the eyes of my son, I felt this very strong love that I actually never felt for somebody before. And the thing that is similar with the love that I feel for Retoy and the love that I felt on my son is that I feel that I love him unconditionally and that I feel that I will never give up on him. No matter what happens and no matter what happened in his life, I will never give up on him. And I, uh, before I, when I was pregnant, uh, I wrote to my son that I hope that I will try to live my life in the same way that I hope that he will live his life. Because when you become a parent, uh, and in the same way as it, when you start a business or something, there are a lot of things that you want to accomplish, and there are a lot of things that you wish you could control that you can't control. And becoming a parent, it really challenged me for my, well, I'm, um, for example, I, I like control. And I have like, I like in some ways, I like perfection. And life is a really big challenge if you like control and you like perfection. Especially if you're a parent and you want to control things that you actually cannot control. And that's why I decided that I want to, the, the thing that I can control is how I behave and the choices that I make. And there are a lot of things and the choices that my son will make and the way he wants to live his life that I actually can't control. But I can do my best on loving him unconditionally and trying to be a good role model. So I decided that I want to live my life in the same way that I hope that he will live his life. And actually, Retoy was, it came, well, a lot of things made the birth of, of Retoy. There are a lot of mothers and fathers to, to Retoy. My son only has one, yet at least. Uh, but, oh, well, like two parents, but anyway. Uh, uh, one of the moments that made me find Rito was actually in a conversation with my son. I was at that time working as a consultant, and I was working with fair trade in, in Sweden. And my son asked me, what is fair trade? And, and what are, what's the difference between fair trade products and other products? And as a consultant, I took my laptop and I showed him a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, <laughs> poor child. But the good thing about it, and what, what I realized, is that when you, when you have to explain something to a child, you have to really understand the essence of what you're talking about. When, like in all good communication, if you talk from your heart, it's so much easier for the other person to actually get what you're talking about, instead of you like, get mixed up in other things. And we have to explain something to a child, you really have to get to the core of it so you can explain it. And that actually challenges you. It's just like, do I really get this? So I started explaining. And with the PowerPoint, what I thought, if I, if I make sure that he understands the difference that this, 
that, that fair trade makes for other children in other parts of the world, then maybe it would be easier. So I showed him some pictures about people growing bananas in the Dominican Republic and explained to him and how when we buy bananas here, we make sure that the people that produce the bananas get fairly paid. It actually affects the opportunities for children in the Dominican Republic to go to school. It affects because the parents get fair paid, but also because when you, a lot of fair trade communities, they also reinvest in the community, so they make sure that they have good schools. And then his brilliant questions, like children always often have, was, why isn't everything fair trade? If this is so good, how come everything is not fair trade? And the other question was, what's the difference be between ecological products and fair trade products? And then I tried to explain that, and uh, I also said that today everything is not fair trade, but hopefully in the future things will be produced with respect and love to both human beings and by following human rights, but also with love and respect to nature. And I say everything is not fair trade, but the things that are fair trade, we can try to buy, and it's very important that we buy those products, because we make a difference for children in other parts of the world. This was me talking, and then just a couple of days later, uh, I was at the store with my son, and I was really stressed, I'd been working a long day, and uh, he was really hungry, so we have to get home and get some dinner done. And I was thinking that after when he falls asleep, I have to start working again. So I was just buying, and then I took some bananas. He was like, are they fair trade? And I'm like, uh, no, they're not. And he was like, but they, and I said, but they don't have any fair trade bananas here. And he looked at me and was like, but you said that, yeah, but they don't have it here. So, and we need bananas, so we're going to take these ones. And I was like, but mom. They have it at Consum, and I was like, I don't have time to go to Consum because I'm at Ikea right now. And then he looked at me like really, really disappointed, and he was like, but the children in the Dominican Republic. And I was like, oh my God, uh, what have I done? Uh, but at the same time, I was really, really, and I was like, okay. We, and it just, you know, when you have these moments in life, it's like, I don't have five minutes, but it's those kind of moments that actually make the world stay in the way that it is today, that we don't prioritize the choices that we really have to make. And the good thing about children is they remind us, you know, as a parent, that children do as you do, not as you say. And they remind us, and he reminds me all the time to try to live and to follow my, my heart and to follow my values, and not only talk about it, but actually practice it. So that's why I, I often say that dreams are really, really important. And we, you know, with, without dream, life is a nightmare, and you need dreams and you need visions. But what is mostly important is that you actually, the world, it's not the dream that, the world that you dream about that makes a difference. It's the world that you take active part in creating every day. And, there's been a lot of talk here about passion, and I have the, the, the big honor to have a great mentor called Jan Eliasson. And he always reminds me of the importance of combining passion and compassion. Because passion is really important, but if you lack compassion, if you don't see how your actions actually affect other people in the world, you do the wrong things. I mean, you can be driven by passion, but at the same time create a lot of difficult situations for other people, and especially for Earth. This, well, well, having passion and compassion, and we're trying to decide what, and I want, when I was like, what do I want to do? And how do I want to run Retoy? I was thinking that I, what we need in one way is not, to, we need to do things differently, and not to try and like, not listen, not, not, not look, oh, hi. I recognize someone in the audience, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but try to do things in another way. We all know, and this is facts that are actually easy for children to understand. We know that if we continue to consume in the way that we do in our part of the world, the Western part of the world, if the whole world hopefully will rise up from poverty, and if they try to consume the same way that we do, we will need three exoplanets. And we don't have three extra planets. So we know right now, and the Earth is telling us, that we have to change 
the way we do things. And we have to, in our part of the world, we have to change consumption, consumption pattern. We are in the middle of, you could say, do you know what the symbol is? Does someone in the audience know what it's, what it's for? Any crisis? Yes, I can see you, but I can hear you. Uh, it's the Chinese symbol for crisis. And what I like about this symbol is, is that it's combined by two symbols, one that is fear and the one, other one is opportunity. And I think that I often feel like, why do I have to come to a crisis to like make the real change? Can I really, it's like, it always, it's in, interlinked in some way. But at the same time, when I'm in the middle of difficult situations, so if I have the, the courage to face facts and see the crisis that we're actually in the middle of, and to see my part in that crisis, I can feel frightened because it's kind of heavy when you take in uh, the, the current situation of the world. But at the same time, there are a lot of opportunities in, opportunities in it to make things different. And that's why I founded Retoy. Retoy creates places where children can play. And we try to create, we opened our first place two weeks ago. And it's been over all expectations in amounts of visitors. We did our first place together with the State Library. And we're really happy that so many children visit Retoy and that they're all, like the, the place is full all the time. But the, how do you say, bibliotecaria? Librarians, they're not as happy as we are <laughs> because they, they like the, the librarians to be quiet and still. And, but, uh, but they're becoming happier and happier because they see that the children also read more and borrow more books. But we wanted to create it, and the, the, the reason that we cooperate with the, library, the libraries is that we want to create non-commercial places where children can come and play, and they can also, we only use toys that actually, what we call retoy toys, that have three criteria that they have to be in manufacture with respect of human rights, with respect of nature, and they have to be fun. Because if we have very ecological toys, but the children want to play with them, then it's you know, it doesn't work. It's like the same thing if we have fair trade coffee that doesn't taste good, we still want the other coffee because we want some things to taste good. We make sure that the children are able to borrow their toys and we also do swap toys events. And we want to, to, to make sure that children know that you, you, can, you don't have to own everything. You can swap things and you can borrow things and you can also, um, when you buy things and when you own things that we always will, you can choose the, the products that are manufactured with respect to nature and human rights. And we have workshops, uh, what we call Retoy Lab at the place, where we, we play together with children so they learn more about their own rights and they know more about the environment by following a toy's life. It's like to make them understand that everything has been made in one way. This is, it's a product and it's like, what does it come from? What kind of material is it? Where has it been manufactured? How did it come to our plate, to, to the store where you buy it? How does it look in different homes when children play with it? And what happens after? Do you throw it away? Do you give it to your younger brothers or sisters? Do you swap it? And how come, what different impacts the different materials have on the environment when we throw them? This is one of the pictures of our place in, in Hamabihuastad, where I have the, the great opportunity to have the best advisory board uh, that I could ever have. It's combined by children. And uh, they've been following the whole process. Also, it's a way of like, try to live in the UN Convention of the Right of the Children, because children have the right to be listened to, especially when it comes to environments they, that they participate in. And they wanted to have like a ton. They want to have like a wooden tunnel that they can play within. So we combine it to be a parking for strollers. And there are a lot of strollers, so the parking is not big enough. But hopefully, we'll, we'll, in, in a couple of weeks, we're opening our next place at Technis Uh Here you see some of the children playing with, it's kind of dark, the picture, but they're playing with like, a game called Milia Bovar. And by playing, they learn about the environment. It's a children reading. And here we have, we combine different toys with books. So you can both learn about the, you, the children's ride, but also to learn about where the toys come from. And here we have some other children playing. 
It's a picture from our retail lab that we do together with UNICEF. This picture, do you see what it is? It's, I see, because I'm a girl, I see a little girl with this big stone. And this picture, I, I, it's been, I, I've been using it a lot because sometimes, in, in one way, it's the good thing about an entrepreneur is that you feel like everything is possible. Because, and if you knew how hard things would be before you start them, then you wouldn't, so I don't think that you always would start them. At least it's, it's been the case for me. But, uh, I have this stone because I feel that a lot of things are possible, but it also is a picture that reminds me that when I'm doing things this way, I'm doing things in the wrong way. Because I, if I feel that it's like only me with this big stone, stone, I'm not cooperating. And I'm not doing things together with others in the way that I should do. And that's why one of the the, the things that had made Retoy pos possible. I only founded it one year ago, and now we already open our next place, and we have two places that we will open in a couple of months. And the, the, the what made this possible is the co that we cooperate. And, I, and, as, and, and when you always, in the, when you talk about sustainability, people always talk about the importance of cooperation between the business sector, the NGOs, and the public sector. So I wanted to, like, not only talk, but to do it. So we cooperate with some companies, especially with the Shinevik Group that founds, uh, that gives us a lot of support. And uh, they have their special thing called Playing for Change, and they select 10 entrepreneurs that they support, and I'm one of them. We work with Fair Trade, of course, because one of the reasons that we founded everything, and with UNICEF. And, and our main partners are municipalities that actually fund the, the, the places and the, the staff everywhere. Um, my last slide is this one. My son's name is Muhammad Ali. And it was actually really, and when I decided, everybody think when I tell them my son's name is Ali, people think that, it's like, oh, she was married to a Muslim, or are you a Muslim, or... And no, it's, I'm not a Muslim, and his father is not a Muslim either. But we decided to give him the name Ali because we thought it was a beautiful name. But it was really painful to see the reactions of people around us when we told them that we decided to give our son the name Ali. People were like, what? You can give him a Muslim name, and it's okay that you want to like, follow your values and walk the talk and everything, but come on, you can't do that to your son. He won't be able to get a job, he won't be able to fly, and he will, it will be <laughs> really hard for him. And the most, actually one of the most painful things about this is that we're talking about, my son was just like, just born, and they were assuming that the same injustices and the same racism that we have today will still be constant like 18 years ahead, when it will be time for him to get a job, and it will be time, well, he flies before that, but it's like, they, they, they assume in one way that we will continue with this injustices in the world. And that also made me even more convinced that I wanted to give Ali the name Ali. And Muhammad Ali, that expires the name for me, said that true success is to reach one's full potential without compromising with one's values. And that's what I'm trying to do with Retoy. So thank you. We got time for a few questions. First, did you buy the bananas at Consum? <laughs> Actually, to tell, I have to tell you, we didn't buy any bananas at all that day because. <laughs> I didn't have time to go to Consum, so it was better to not buy bananas, but the day after, I bought bananas at Consum. In uh, what way are you working with larger companies? Uh, right now, we're working with, um, with, especially with the Plane for Change. They give funding for my salary, but they also give us a lot of support and, uh, and help with 
media relationships. We're also working with Faber Gear that owns the, the one of the places that we are, well, our first place, and they also help us economically, but also with the, um, let me say, yta. With, we don't have to pay any rent, yeah, with the place. And we're trying to work, we, I, I decided we'd actually has made things like kind of, in one way a little bit hard, that I didn't want sponsorship. I want like true involvement from the partners that we have, so we really have to choose partners. And they also want, they have to be able to do something uh, for their own to make things more sustainable. Not only keep doing business, running business as usual and give us funding, but in one way are still create, continue to create unsustainability. More questions from the audience? Please. Yeah. What benefits uh, do you have from producing in, in developing countries? No, it, this is it's an excellent question because one of the, like always, when you raise a question, you raise a lot of other questions. And the importance, I think, is not to, only because you know that it raises a lot of questions, not to be able to ask the question. And when we talk about like what we call retoy toys, uh, we're trying to find a balance. With, now we only use like if they're marked fair trade. Uh, but still, it's, it's always when you think about ecological perspective, maybe it will be better if it's produced nearby. Uh, but then you have the challenge that you don't support people in developing countries. And we, we don't have all the answers, but we make sure that we actually ask the questions and also to, to make sure that parents and children are aware of the different, to try to make sure that we make like conscious choices, even if it's not always that we can do them all the way, but that we have a choice. Yeah. Last question. Oh, fun. Well, yeah. What is the business model and how do you commercialize this? With <laughs> well, the that's a big question to end with. <laughs> but um, I think that it's exactly I, my, just by driven by passion, I only said I, I want to get started and to do a pilot, and then after that, trying to find the business model. But I think what we will do, it's like we, that's why we're trying, we have to have a proof of concept, and that's why we're trying right now. And after I think that the business model will be an, in cooperation with municipalities that buy, that want to make sure that their citizens have better places to be in, like in the same way that we had libraries, then we will have retoys. But we also will have um, companies to support, so we make sure that we Go, that a lot of children can come, so we can we do the marketing through ex companies, for example. But at the same time, I feel one thing it's, it's really good to cooperate. But one of the big lessons that I have from this year is it's so much easier if you have your own budget. So we're trying to see different ways to actually to to create our own income to be able to sell the product that we now have, and we have a lot of different alternatives. Now now we're working. We're also working with, uh, like for example, a big hotels that want to have retoy places in all the hotels in one way to be able to, to, to how to say, to charge yeah, that. To charge yeah. it, yeah. But I don't have the bit, uh, this, actually I met the CEOs from this, a lot of Shinovic companies this week and they were, they're trying to help, to help me out to find the, the business model to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.